Now's also the time where I kind of go around and set up some of what I would call those final views. We've already set up a few, including our working view, which comes in handy a lot. That's pretty nice. Adding one or two people to the scene usually helps with scale. I just like these little black silhouette people. They pop and add a little bit to the scene. So while we're waiting on 3D Max to load, why don't we talk about some of the more, I think, complex, more specialty features of SketchUp. Not so much as they pertain to this project, but some other things you may want to use as your skills kind of get a little bit better. So I'm going to just save this and open up a new file and we can start doing some sort of weird things. Good weird things, not weird weird things. So file new okay great so we talked a little bit about that follow me tool and how we've made things like the eye beam extruded along a shape but what we haven't done is taken something that's more complicated like say an arc like that shape and extruded something that might be another fairly complex shape like let's say another arc if you want to draw something kind of like this so i'm just hitting a for arc and now i'm gonna Copy it over like we've done all day long. And erase this other stuff. Notice I'm using a plane that I created to help guide my working surface. Okay, so now we have that arc there. I'm going to rotate this. So hit Q for rotate. and Rotate it 180 degrees. And I'm going to grab this front one and give it a little bit extra shape. I find the scale tool is really useful when I'm dealing with some of these more complicated shapes like arcs and stuff like that. So now that I have that arc, I placed it along this other path. And so this kind of gets at some of the geometry I think people think SketchUp can't handle. Now, it's certainly not the easiest thing in the world to navigate in SketchUp, and there's definitely software out there that's probably better suited to handle stuff like this. But if you know what you're doing and you can actually describe the shape that you're trying to make, you can usually find a way to build it. So again, I made one arc here, which is kind of a surface that I want to have extruded along this shape here. I'm going to play with this shape just a tad. I'm going to hit K for follow me. We've used this tool a few times making some other shapes. And now I've extruded that along, and it's worked just fine. So it's nice and smooth. It's still relatively light geometry. I'm going to go ahead and make that a group. So one cool thing about that object is if we wanted to, say, make a bunch of those, I'll go ahead and make it a component and then array it around a point. You've seen how we can copy this way and hit X4 and make a couple of instanced clones of that object. Another way to work is that same idea, but using your rotate tool. So I'm going to hit Q for rotate, the protractor will pop up, and I'm going to use this line here as a reference line to start rotating this object. So I'm going to rotate it. In this case, it's asking me for an angle. You see down here at the bottom, it's asking me for an angle. I'm going to rotate it 360 degrees. It spun it all the way around, and it's currently in the exact location as before. But now if I hit divide by 5, it should give me five of these pieces arrayed around that exact point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again so you can take a closer look. Hit Q. I get the protractor. Go to my center point of where I want it to array. Hit Control to the plus sign so the plus sign shows up. And rotate 360 oh degrees. After doing that, hit Divide. And this time I'm going to divide it by 20. And now we get all of these things. I'll try to divide it again by 12 or divide it by, let's say, 13. And you can continue to keep doing this until you find the number that you actually want to divide it by. You can get some pretty interesting forms and some pretty interesting shapes pretty quickly following this method. And again, remember, they're all linked. So as you start to manipulate one now, they all start to respond. You can really start to have fun with what SketchUp can do right out of the box. I think people are a little intimidated with SketchUp a lot of times and think that they have to use much more complex software to get to stuff like this. But again, I always kind of say, if you can describe what it is you're trying to do, you can usually make it pretty easily. You just have to think about it a little bit first. So say this is what you're actually trying to create. Once you get something like this, rather than keeping all of these objects as individual instances, what you can do is explode them all, which might take a little while, when you're dealing with these more complicated surfaces, things tend to take a little bit longer. There's just that many more surfaces to have to deal with. And I think this is a pretty big object. Anytime you're using commands that are really complex, I like to save often. Now, if you want to get rid of some of these 
little things. You can actually select them and right click and say intersect with selection. It's sort of like a poor man's boolean command to where we're taking all of these things and actually creating a physical edge that I can then go and erase this stuff and maintain some of that existing geometry. That's one tool that I find myself using more now than I used to as I'm kind of starting to push what I can model in SketchUp. And this is all still very manageable geometry. You just have to, again, be very mindful about how you do it.